It's day 126 of the raw deal. The Clinton presidency holding us all hostage. We are in their clutches. That's very creative. Joe did that. Um, and there's late news on this uh, travel business at the White House. They said that they fired all seven people last week. Remember Dee Dee Myers? She was, she was at the White House press room, and she was announcing this, looking down at the floor as she talked. She said, well, we've gotten rid of all these people. There were a lot of investigations, a lot of people doing things. Could not look you or anybody else in the eye when she made the announcement. Guess what? We'll have details of this coming up in what we call Section C. But no, they didn't fire seven. They just fired two. Five or, no, they kept two and five are on, on, on some kind of, of leave of absence while they investigated. I mean, they are in such trouble at the White House. We'll give you details as we uh, head on down the show's path tonight. This is Lauren uh, Fleming. Uh, he's our poster boy. As you know, he was a get, he was, well, let me tell you what's happened here. You may not know this. But he was a, a, a first questioner of Clinton during a San Diego town meeting. You remember this? And his question was... Mr. President, can you name for me one nation which has taxed itself into prosperity? And the president said, no, I can't. Then the San Diego Tribune decided, we can't have good questions like that. We can't have tough questions asked of our president. We're going to find out about this Lorne Fleming. So they did a big expose, and his ex-wife uh, is telling people that he didn't file tax returns nor make tax payments that he was supposed to have made in the last 10 years. They ran a big front page piece on Friday in the Union Tribune trying to discredit this guy. Now he has since called us and said, hey, uh, uh, I, my ex-wife is making all this up. I've paid everything I owe and we accept that. But it doesn't matter to me whether this guy owes bad taxes, back taxes or not. The fact is it's a good question. It's a question the mainstream media should have been asking all along because it goes right to the point that tax increases do not grow an economy. They are not the way to bring prosperity to the middle class. Al Hunt on the Capitol Gang made his outrage of the week the fact that this guy hadn't paid his taxes. Al, the outrage of the week is that guys like you aren't asking the right questions and average citizens are having to take over. You wonder why average citizens resent the media. It's because you're not doing your jobs. When they get a chance to ask the questions of the president, they're asking the questions they're telling you they want to know the answers to. So, Lauren, you're still our poster boy. It's still a great question. <laughs> your business is your business, and we don't do investigations on this show like they do, obviously, at the Union Tribune in San Diego. This is Leon Panetta. He's probably saying, why did I take this job? <laughs> this is David Boren. These guys, we have a clip. We have a clip tonight of him talking about all these entitlement budget cuts. Boren saying, they're not cutting entitlements and we need to. We took our cameras out and asked people on the street, what is an entitlement? We'll show you that. Tom Foley, Speaker of the House. Bob Dole. He says, I can't believe he's getting political with this... Uh, <laughs> FBI investigation of the White House travel office. This, this is great, too. Now, this I want to show you. We're going to put this in the fourth monitor tonight, rather than a question mark. Dan's bake sale was Saturday in Fort Collins, Colorado. There was a protest group out there, and we want to show you who they were and what they look like. Can we get a close-up of this, uh, Chet? Now, this is Flush Rush. We're going to get... Look at those people. <laughs> And you want to know something else, you want to know something else, they, these flush rush people, put that picture back up, I want this, I want this branded into your mind. Those are the anti-rush people that showed up, and they, there are about seven of them, they were charging people to have their picture taken with them. So even they took advantage of the opportunity of the bake sale that I spawned to earn a little money, the sleeves bags, I mean, that, look, but that's okay. I really didn't mean to call them sleeves bags. This is America, and we welcomed one and all, and our people were friendly to them and had a good time. There was no provocation, and these people's attempt to stop everything and protest fell flat. My friends, there are times on this program where we find it necessary to be critical of the media, the dominant media culture, because of unfairness, inaccuracy, and bias. But my friends, I would like to show you a clip. The press, when they do it right, they do it well. They do it better than most can do it. 
Here is a clip of a recent thing. I just happened to see this on the TV the other day, and I said, i got to show this to my audience. It's from NBC. Here's an example of what the news could be like if the press devoted itself to fairness, to accuracy, to decency, and getting it right with every story. Take a look. It was supposed to be a little old bake sale, but then Rush Limbaugh is so much bigger than that. He'd suggested that his fans buy a cookie for conservatism, but the little bake sale turned into a big deal. NBC's Roger O'Neill was there for Rush Fest 93. When Dan Kay wanted to buy something, but couldn't afford the $30 it cost, he called a friend. Dan, here's what we're gonna do. Okay. You must organize a bake sale. If the voice sounds familiar, it belongs to one of the most popular and probably most conservative talk show hosts in the country, Rush Limbaugh. Also known as the doctor of democracy. Happy you're with us. The number here is 800 -200. Limbaugh's bake sale suggestion was sort of a spoof, but it was heard by his estimated 18 million listeners. Well, one thing led to another and another, and all of a sudden today in Dan's hometown of Fort Collins, Colorado, there was a bake sale with Dan and maybe 25, 30, 35,000 other people from everywhere. Three charter airplanes flew into town from California and Texas, and from Denver, 28 charter buses took the trip. People drove to Dan's bake sale from all over the place. 1,300 miles to get here, and it was worth every mile. We're from the Bay Area, and we're here to see all the our fellow conservatives. Dan was humble. I don't think I have ever seen this many people in one spot for anything, and for me, this is just amazing. Dan's a nice guy, as you can see, but all these people didn't come from all over just to help Dan raise his 30 bucks. There was one other little, well, maybe not little, attraction today. Now, let me give you a little lesson in something. Do you know what all caused this? Me! <laughs> Dan, by the way, did bake 500 chocolate chip cookies, and he sold out at two for a dollar in 20 minutes. What Dan, was it Dan wanted to buy for those 30 bucks? Very much. Well, the Rush Limbaugh Limbaugh's newsletter, of course. Of Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Fort Collins, Colorado. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. Gary Butler will be back tomorrow. I'm Deborah Roberts. Good night. And there you have it, my friends. There is an example of fair, accurate, positive reporting. If they did a story like that every night on the news about me, who knows what their ratings would be. Oh, that was... Now, we want to thank NBC for letting us use that. And one of the reasons that we did is that there was, a, there was an NBA playoff game on Saturday, uh, the, the Knicks and the Bulls, and a lot of places in the East Coast didn't get to see the NBC Nightly News because of the lateness of the game. So we wanted to show it to you, and there you have it. We got the rest of the show. Entitlements, what are they? Are they going to be cut? Are they going to expand? All coming up next. Don't go away. <laughs> from the Limbaugh Institute for Advanced Conservative Studies with another half-hour lecture straight for you. This is the largest free education institution in America, my friends. <laughs> One more thing about Lauren Fleming. There's something I want to point out. Here's a guy who asks a great question. Our poster boy from San Diego asks a great question of the president, and the San Diego Union Tribune, a couple of days later, tries to do his big hatchet job and disqualify the guy and his question. Uh, on the basis that he hadn't paid some taxes. Well, you know who else hasn't paid some taxes? Try the Clinton administration. They have a lot of Social Security taxes they didn't pay because they hired people in a, in a Zoe Baird kind of way during the campaign. They thought they were hiring independent contractors and didn't pay Social Security taxes. They also have some campaign debts, but I don't see the San Diego Union Tribune doing a huge investigation of the Clinton. And frankly, they've got too many other uh, cover-ups that the Clinton administration engaged in to try to handle to mess around with that. All right, let's go to entitlements. This is a fun thing to watch. Um, uh, most people, I bet you, don't even know what an entitlement is. Here's Leon Panetta. He's chairman of the Office of Management and Budget. He's explaining the Clinton economic plan and all these budget cuts. See if you've heard this before. 
Entitlements are an area we have to confront. They represent about 50% of the federal budget. Let me tell you what we do on entitlements. On agriculture, we get about three billions in savings from tightening up on the uh, support programs that flow to uh, farmers in this country and tightening up on some of the other programs that need to be tightened up in that area. Three billion. Three billion in veterans programs to achieve additional savings there. <laughs> 50 billion in Medicare savings. It goes above 50 billion if you include Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid over 50 billion dollars. Social Security. We increase the amount of benefits subject to taxation in Social Security. Cost of living indexes. We restrain cost of living indexing on military and civil service retirees. Now those are the spending cuts that are part of this package. What spending cuts? There are no spending cuts. Let me tell you what a spending cut. Look, Clinton's own plan adds one and a half trillion dollars to the national debt at the end of the decade. There are no cuts. You got to understand something, folks. When guys like Podetta talk about cuts, they're talking about reductions in spending increases. There are no cuts. If there were real cuts being made, the deficit would be smaller, and it isn't. It's going up. Now, David Boren, a renegade Democrat, a moderate Democrat. I find this funny. The, the Clinton administration thought they're going to have all kinds of troubles with the Republicans. Uh, and, and I also find this interesting. This is something I really want to point out to you. I have some Republican friends who said, no, nah, the Republicans are doing the wrong thing by opposing the president. They just step aside and let this plan go on through. Otherwise, the Democrats are going to blame them, the Republicans, for this plan being stonewalled and not going through. I said, no, the Republicans have to follow their ethics. I said it right here on this show. They've got to follow their principles, and they've got to do what's best for you, the middle class, the people who make this country work. And this plan hurts the middle class, hurts you, hurts the people who make this country work, and so they've got to stop it. And after they stop it, they've got to come up with their own alternative, a better idea. They've done that. They've done two different alternatives, and Boren has now offered a bipartisan alternative. And who is it that Clinton goes to the Capitol Hill meetings to see? It's not Republicans. He's going up to see Democrats. Yes. He's going up to see moderate Democrats. Moderate Democrats. Clinton was a moderate Democrat, wasn't he? He was a new Democrat. He's supposed to stop all this. He's going to talk to his own people who are stopping his own plan. We got him here, folks, because he's not a new Democrat. And there's nothing moderate about the guy. Now, here's Boren. Now, you listen to what he says after you just heard Panetta talk about all these spending cuts. Listen to Boren. 46% of all spending is entitlements. It's doubled in the last 15 years. It's now at $450 billion. It's going to $900 billion, according to the administration, within another five years. And everyone knows that if you don't control that runaway entitlement increase, that you could add all these taxes on, and then three years from now, because it's gone up, you, the deficits will be as big as ever. And George, what will that do to this country? What will that do to this president? What will that do to the Democratic Party? It'll ruin it, hopefully. I mean, that's what we're doing. <laughs> now, now, not, now, not the country. Not the country, just the president and the Democratic Party. We don't want the country to be ruined. That's what we're trying to do here is stop that from happening. But you've got to help. Now, you hear what Boren said? $400 billion in entitlement spending up to $900 billion. That's an increase of $500 billion, yet the Office of Management and Budget guy said, listed all these cuts. There are no cuts. There are no cuts. There are only reductions in spending increases. And even with those reductions in spending increases, we're going to double entitlement spending. Back with more after this. Welcome back. All right. I want to ask the audience here point blank. How many of you, a show of hands will do, and I'm not going to ask you to define this so that you don't have to speak, so don't worry about embarrassing yourselves. How many of you know what an entitlement is, a government entitlement? Look at that. That's an educated audience. And I bet you less than 50% understand what it is. <laughs> well, that's less than half the audience put their hands up. You know what an entitlement is? An entitlement is something in the federal budget that has been written into law that must be paid. Doesn't matter who does what, you have to write a law to change it. Social Security is an entitlement, Medicare is an entitlement. It's something to which we have decided people are entitled to. Some kind of government benefit. Now, the amount of money we spend, it's actually 55% of all 
spending is entitlement spending. And that's why you can't reduce the budget much, because you have to go in there and change the law. And let me tell you what's tough about changing the law. You got all these Medicare recipients or Social Security recipients or other, like agriculture recipients, and they're all receiving entitlements. Now, individually, the amount of money they get is not that much. Most of them couldn't live well at all on what they get. It has to be supplanted with something else, uh, supplemented. Uh, it's not that much, but with all the people we give this money to, you add that up and it's a tremendous amount. So here comes a congressman who says, you know what, it's people on entitlements that are causing our problems. That's why we're going broke. It's people getting entitlements. Well, the people getting entitlements are getting 13 grand a year. They say, you're blaming me? I'm getting 13 grand and you're blaming me? I'm going to vote against you, pal, the next chance I get. So nobody touches entitlements. Nobody's got the guts to do it. We ask people, what do you think an entitlement is? Here's what we found on the street. Can you tell me what an entitlement program is? No. <laughs> I can't. I'm only 17. And I didn't finish high school. No, I cannot. And I just graduated college, as a matter of fact, and I still can't tell you what it is. An entitlement to what? I don't know. An entitlement is a government benefit that's provided to people, either on Social Security or education or education loans. They could be, uh, they take different forms. An entitlement is when you're entitled to get certain benefits or uh, certain uh, proceeds or certain social uh, programs and uh, just a way to boost their own pocket, I think. <laughs> I know they call them entitlements because they think they're entitled to them. Uh, but they're not entitlements at all. They're pennies from heaven, pennies from taxpayers like you and me. Bottom line is, not too many people know what an entitlement is, and that's what the debate's all about. Uh, hopefully now you have a better understanding of just what an entitlement is and how hard they are to get to. Back with the real mess of the Clinton White House. recent presidential campaign, I implored people to care and to be concerned about the character of our leaders, because I think that leadership descends from character. And I think that principles and ethics are part of character. And if character isn't present, then you're not going to have leadership and you're certainly not going to have principles and ethics. And I think we see evidence of that almost daily with the Clinton White House. First off, that airplane sitting out there, Air Force One on the tarmac at LAX, with all the delays and, and all of the, the money that it cost and everything you've heard about it. And for the President of the United States to actually say, well, nobody told me that, I mean, that will not accept responsibility for any blaming somebody else. And then the press going along with it exempting him. Well, he needs a better staff. He needs somebody that can make these. He's in charge. And he's the one who's got this arrogance, and he's the one who's into the glitz of the presidency and these Hollywood things and now having the trappings of the office. And to sit there and to blame somebody else. He said, well, it wasn't my decision. I'm a prisoner on that airplane. You know, Buck never got here. <laughs> and now, and now we have this, this is a real scandal, my friends, this thing in the White House travel office. Because let me tell you what happened. Somebody in the White House wanted to get rid of the people in the travel office, career people, nonpartisan people. They made a phone call to the Justice Department, the FBI. They're not allowed to do that. They said, we need some help. We need you to come over here, conduct an investigation. We'll help you. The White House gave guidance to the Justice Department in conducting an investigation to give the White House reason to get rid of seven people. And they did. They smeared them, accused them of all kinds of um, uh, accounting malpractice without evidence, just like Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas. And then the business went to Clinton cronies. It's pure patronage. Well, the Clinton administration late on Tuesday said, wait a minute, five of the seven are still getting paid. Only two people got fired. We really are putting the others on administrative leave pending the investigation. They're spinning. They don't know what they're doing. They have no clue how to handle this, folks, because they can't believe people aren't just accepting their lies and deceit every day. Listen, we got a little montage of the latest events. Take a look at this. It has nothing to do with any, any decision except to try to save the taxpayers and the press money. Just called the White House and said that in the future it would be better if the contact was made through the Attorney General or the Deputy or the Associate. There is nothing more important to this administration than to pre preserve the integrity and the appearance of integrity of the Justice Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> How do you 
expect us to believe you, George? There's nothing more important than this. If it was that important, you wouldn't have botched this on the first day. And they didn't tell Janet Reno. And I wouldn't want her mad at me uh, <laughs> after what happened. I, mean, I really wouldn't. I, I, and then, I'm just trying to save the taxpayers some money. No money being saved. The taxpayers, the press, pays for all the travel that goes to that travel office. This is not an excess of spending. This is a total breakdown of the White House, folks. And they are in huge organizational trouble. I love it. <laughs> we'll be back. Services are provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Rush Limbaugh's wardrobe by Rochester. Big and tall. Send your Rush video to the Rush Limbaugh Show, 515 West 57th Street, New York City, New York, 10019. to order a video cassette of Rush's TV show for only $24.95. Just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. For a transcript, send $5 to Burrell's Transcripts, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. Or call 1-800-777-TEXT.